Hello everybody, this is Ahmed Mukhtar and you're watching Dr. Networks and today we're going to be looking at Citrix Load Balancer's X Forwarding feature and a little bit of ca uh, packet capturing as well. Well, the thing is it's uh, 1028 as you can see p.m. and at exactly 3 a.m. in the morning I have an activity to actually configure this service so I was like thinking that I should make a video out of it first before I go it in production because obviously yeah. You get lazy, man. I mean, you don't make videos once you're done with all that stuff, right? So, um, here we go. Uh, let me just show you my topology, what I have over here set up, the lab set up here. Um, it, it, it looks a little bit congested this way, but uh, let me just give you this. Uh, I have this Citrix Load Balancer, or ADC, or Netscaler over here. Um, so, um, what I have is a management interface connected to where it is port 1 and I have a kind of a LAN interface where the clients basically come in uh, that is on 1 slash 1 all of this side is in VLAN 10 this port is a trunk and here is where uh, users will come in from the users will be me uh, because I'll be connecting via my virtual adapter on this switch so I'll be uh, requesting the HTTP uh, packets um to get from these servers that i have on the right side now uh these are not actually windows servers they're basically routers uh, these are just routers that have http and telnet service enabled on them nothing uh too much fancy over there so uh all of this side is in vlan 20 this is a trunk port we have tag ports okay so um this is tagging over here uh this is also tagging now i'm not covering all of this actually right now but I, I intend to actually cover all this, um, you know, like the basics of how Metscular and Citrix work. Uh, but for the time being, the time is short for me right now, so I'm just uh, focusing on X forwarding feature right now. Now what happens, uh, why do we need X forwarding feature first of all? Typically when you deploy uh, Citrix load balancers, it's kind of like in a two arm deployment where you have one side over here as you can see on the client side there's a different subnet over here as you can see that's uh, um, snap over here and these are my virtual IP addresses my virtual servers you could call them so the clients are actually hitting on 10.101.99 uh, on ports 80 and 23 not uh, the 23 is actually for uh, the testing purposes but I am the client let me just show you what I'm saying so this is me hitting the servers these are Cisco system servers these are I, I told you that these are routers actually in the behind the scenes so if I do uh, um, a refresh you can see I'm load balancing back and forth between the servers now um, the thing is whenever um, we have a two arm deployment what's gonna happen is this SNP is the source IP address that is going to talk to these servers. You know, um, whenever these servers do a ca packet capture or something like that, they're going to see the source IP address of 20.1.1.10. Uh, Not exactly the source, uh, which is which will be, actually, hang on, uh, my source uh, IP address that I have on my system is uh, 10.1.1. I believe it's 55. Not too sure actually. So uh, I'm here, I'm, I'm the client. I'm actually trying to access the web services uh, which I have where they're configured on these servers. So my request comes from uh, the source IP address of 10.1.1.55 hitting, uh, and the uh, sorry, destination is 10.1.1.99. And that actually gets the load balanced uh, between these two servers over here, here and here. Uh, but the thing is, the source IP address uh, is that scalar's SNP over here for both of them. So, um, now in HTTP applications, there is a feature where you can insert a header uh, in HTTP to actually um, get the client IP address means if I if this is my IP address what I will do is I will insert this IP address in the HTTP header and then send it towards uh, these guys these servers now the source IP address will still be 20.1.1.10 and the destination will be 20.1.1.12 and 11 depending upon the load balancing mechanism but in the header of HTTP they will be 
there will be the client IP address, if you will. And um, that IP address, uh, the, the server team, the application or server team can actually have, you know, like application recognize that uh, client IP field, which is called X forwarded for, by the way. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they want to log the traffic, like uh, which IP address basically hit them, then that can be done as well. So you get the concept, right? Uh, I mean, it, we're not exactly changing the source IP address, like uh, the SNP will still be there, but we, we're inserting the client IP address as a header in the HTTP headers. So uh, it's, it's mandatory that these guys, these servers should also understand what that header field means. You get it? I hope you got it. Uh, that's a basic uh, function, I mean, of X forward for that's what we're gonna do and configure it. Uh, so they're basically, uh, what I've seen is basically two ways that you could do this. Well, first way is, uh, by the way, this is your Citrix ADC. Um, so the first, um, okay. The first thing what you uh, need to do is go into traffic management and you'll see virtual servers here services service group and servers okay firstly the easy way to insert the client ip address is that you can go into services if you have a specific services configured as this way or you may have service group uh, it's just these services are grouped together in the service group so you may or may not have them uh, but it's kind of like the same thing. Let's, uh, oh, okay, let, let's use services. So, uh, for example, I have this, uh, uh, this service configured for this, this server. These are basically servers. And I want any traffic going towards them to have a client IP address attached to them. So how will that IP, uh, how will that work? So you can actually go into the server, uh, I mean the service, and you have this, um, service settings over here you can click that and you can go ahead and check mark that and this is the, this is what i inserted actually to be really honest um, by default it's something else it's not the uh, x forward four but this is the the header that's going to be inserted in the http uh header actually <laughs> this is the http header that we're gonna you know like insert so um that's how you can do x forwarded for very easily very easy to do uh on a service level uh, so this is how it is this is the second server you can see it, it's client uh, dash ip so this will be the field that will be inserted if i um don't change that so you can say you have to type in actually x forward for there it is it's already there so you can play uh do, do that now um if you want to see Actually, uh, let me just show you first. Uh, let me just disable this. Uh, I think it's already disabled on this server, uh, this service. And going towards this service, and it's enabled. Hang on, let it, let it be enabled. And I'll show you what happens. So server one has that X forwarder feature disabled, and server two has it enabled, right? Let me just cross verify. Yeah, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a packet capture. And um, I, if you don't know where that is, that is in the system. And you go to diagnostics and you start new trace. It's better that you run the capture over here and you should have filters. The packet size should be zero. Uh, that is uh, according to the documentation of uh, Citrix that you should do that. Otherwise, it will only detect a packet with that specific size or something like that. Uh, so now the other thing is we need filters. So I already have uh, filters uh, configured over here. Uh, th as you can see, this is our topology over here. So this is a filter. Well, let me just copy this and paste that and I'll show you what it is. Paste that over there. So you can see connection source IP address equal to 20.1.1.10. Now 10, that, that is the SNP of the Citrix load balancer and uh, the connection destination ip address is going to be uh, either server 1 which is 20.1.1.11 or server 2 which is 
12. Uh, but alongside that, I needed the port numbers to be matched. So this is the whole syntax, kind of like that. So this is an and statement over there, and in between them, I have an or. The or is specifying the, the actually, I don't know which, which server it, it is going to use. Uh, so that's why I've um, got this configure, I mean, uh, filter ready for the other server as well. So let's just start our trace starting the trace and uh, oh yeah it's working now let's do uh, let's refresh our page we, we got into server 2 then we got to server 1 then we again got to server 2 now uh, let's go back and say okay stop the capture and download it so we got some packets let's download it by the way, I will, uh, I will leave the capture um, syntax down below so you can actually see that. Now, what I am actually interested in in the HTTP headers. Now, uh, 20.1.1.12, I believe it was server 2. Now, inside that, you see this field, x forward 4. This is my IP address, actually. Um, if you want to see that, that's basically, I think, over here. Somewhere yeah, over there, I have my VM there actually having this adopter configured with Eve. So this is my IP address, 10.1.1.55. So that is being uh, sent to the server in an HTTP header, as you can see. This is a header, okay? Uh, so inside the get message, you can see, okay? So um, this is how it's done. But for the second one, let's see if we have that. Oh, see that? That field is empty for 20.1.1.11. So, uh, for 11, we can't learn the source IP address of the client that is trying to access the server. But for the other one, we can because we enabled that, right? So, uh, that's, that's really easy to actually configure on a service or server uh, level. But once we get into the virtual IP level, things get a little bit interesting. I would say uh, that's a little bit different. If you want to, uh, I mean, um, hang around for a minute, uh, for two to three minutes, I mean, depending upon the video, it takes a long, takes a long time, I, I'm not sure. But what I'm going to be doing is, for example, if you need uh, to apply this specific setting, not to the server level, but you need to apply it to a virtual server level, in them, you don't have this option, you know. You, you can't actually specify uh, the client IP address. That, that field is not over here. Okay. Um, which we let me just show you. Which field I'm talking about. Server, uh, service settings. So this settings field in the virtual IP address, let me show you that. So uh, we don't have that. We don't have those settings field over here. So we cannot insert the, uh, the source IP packet with the virtual IP, uh, virtual servers. So what to do if we want, if we don't want that uh, services uh, field to be enabled for each and everything to get that source IP address attached, what do we do? Well, uh, let me first of all disable that from here. Okay, disabling it. Now here comes the concepts of policies. So, so you need to create policies. Uh, so you can actually apply policies if you uh, click plus it it'll have a policy uh, kind of menu over here and you can actually uh, apply the policies but first we need to create policies and those specific policies in which you insert the x forwarded for header is called a rewrite policy so for that there's actually a script uh, let me just show you you can actually tell it, oh sorry, SSH to the Citrix load balancer and actually paste this in, okay, that the policy will be created. But I just want to give you a feel of how it actually works, um, a little bit, not too much in depth, okay. So we have the first uh, sentence is basically saying that we're going to create a rewrite action first instead of the policy. Now let me show you why that is actually. So. Um, why that is, is uh, first of all, I need to go from, oh, sorry, app expert, 
going into app expert and going into policies if i try to create a policy first right hand whenever i start to uh, add the policy i have to give it a name and the action as well so you see the action is um, um, drop by default we need an action first to actually call it in or we could actually create the policy and change the action afterwards it's our it, it's your call but um, preferably what i believe is better that you should create the action first so what is the action what are we gonna do now um if you would prefer to go and just uh, you're just not into it and just type in okay let me just uh, paste the policy in there i want to get running so i'll just first of all 56 that's the ip address of the net scaler going to the root Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just paste that uh, React action first of all. What's it saying is basically this is the name of the action. Okay, so nothing fancy about that. So it wants me to insert an HTTP header. This is what the action is. So we're going to insert the header x forward 4. Okay, and in that field, it's going to be the client source IP address. Get it? The same that we saw in one Wireshark. Hang on, let me see if I have that still. Yeah, I have. Uh, no, but yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> so there it is. The X44, and this is the client IP address field. I mean, uh, the one you saw uh, just a minute ago over here. Okay. So this is this is the syntax. So if I were to copy this and paste it in the NetScaler directly, and it didn't work. What happened? Oh, let me just. Uh... Okay, that's right. So add rear action for exporter insert RTP header, exporter for client IP source. Now it actually reflects on the GUI as well. If I were to refresh here, you got that added. So if you want to see how it's done, so this is actually it. The name is exporter uh, add. And uh, the type is insert HTTP header. Uh, it, it's grayed out now because uh, I have to delete this actually to create, to create a new one. And the header name, this is the actual name in in which you see in Wireshark. This is the header name. Okay, this is the exporter four. If I were to change the name to something else, it will show as the same in the Wireshark as well. And the expression is client IP source. Now this is uh, actual value that you're getting over here okay this is the 10 now on on 55 you see over here so that's a rewrite action now let's just create uh, policies so i'm not going to be wasting uh, any of your time i mean creating the policy in the gui uh, we can actually cross verify from the gui so just to give you uh, what we're going to do here, over here we're going to add a rewrite policy this time it's a policy it's not an action. So I'm creating a policy. X forwarder are forwarded add pool. Now this is also a name of the policy. It's not exactly uh, a syntax, okay? And uh, what will be the policy? It has to look for this. I mean, uh, um, it, it's actually looking for the header X forward four. If it's not there, it will add the header. And this is actually, if you, if I were to uh, change the color, this is the same action. This is the, act, this is the rear action of the policy. You get it? If it not, if the HTTP request header does not exist, uh, does not has this X forward four header inside of it, what's it gonna do? It's gonna call this action policy and insert it. That's it. That's that's what it's trying to say. Nothing too fancy about it. So let's just copy this, paste it over here. Uh, there it is. Uh, now I need to go to. I should have actually. Yeah. Okay. So rewrite policies. Just uh, hit refresh. You will see the policy over here. This is the name. Let's just click that. So x forward add policy. This is the name. The action is x forward add that just we that that is what we just created okay the rewrite action so the we selected that action and then 
this is uh, uh, the expression that we need okay it's basically saying it will check the header if it does not contain an x word for header uh, I mean it, this basically says that if it does not exist then obviously the action would be to add it add the x word header so you understand what I'm trying to tell you I hope you do because I've been doing this like for a full day now so I wanted you to know as well what I'm trying to do and achieve, you know. So I, uh, I just don't, don't want to do it alone, man. That's, that's to be really honest to you, okay. I took a lot of time to actually get this, so I wanted you to know how it's done. I hope this will help you. Okay, let's uh, click OK. And now um, we go into traffic management, into virtual servers, HTTP VIP what we have over here and add a policies click on the plus icon which type of policy we were creating if you look at this it's a rewrite policy okay rewrite so we select a rewrite and on what kind of request are we targeting if you were to look cl uh, closely it's it's, it's 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 the request headers okay of HTTP so the request is the one that we type in continue that and uh, now it wants me to bind the policy which policy is it the one we just created so let's select that bind it done and we're good to go now let's do a capture again diagnostics going to start new trace to the zero and uh, okay I'll leave this in the description don't worry copy that and paste it over here uh, okay start it okay okay there's also one caveat I want to discuss okay remember that and then uh, let me just first of all show you that we have the x forwarding uh, header on both the http get requests oh actually sorry i did not use the browser oops sorry 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 doing it again in a minute in a minute got this up and running again i forgot to actually uh do some requests uh, like this Okay, a couple of time refreshing and we've got it. So let's download it again. And okay, we've got some HTTP packets. This one's going to 11, the first server. And sure enough, uh, we've got it. X forwarder 4, there it is. Okay, and uh, going to the second server, uh, we also got that. So there it is. That's how you do X forwarded forwarding or forward for a header um, for your application team. Now it's up to the application team. They have to do some amends on their server side and actually recognize this header so that they could get the logs on who was on who is trying to access their uh, service, whatever it is. Now one caveat, one caveat. I need to really discuss this, man. This is really important. This is important because because. Um, uh, we, we we were doing this activity and we got stuck into this what we did what what we uh, what we saw actually uh, there was a UAT or a non-production server on which uh, what happened was uh, let me just show you they had created a server actually a service not with HTTP but with TCP okay it was created the TCP and the port number was 80. So obviously, yeah, you can say, yeah, you know what? Port 80 is uh, falls into the TCP, obviously it, it will work. So they actually went ahead and created the virtual servers with TCP, as you can see over here in, in, in the way I have configured the telnet one, uh, with port 80. Now the problem is, was that when, whenever we tried to apply the policy to a virtual server who had a protocol set to TCP, it won't work. It it would say that this is for HTTP only, and this is TCP. We cannot add this. So 
it was brutal. We had to recreate each and every service again, okay, uh, with HTTP, okay, you get it? That was a pain. So if you're going to deploy this, remember this caveat, and beforehand, you should be aware that because you may have downtimes and stuff, uh, we do actually, we're working in a bank and oh man, there are a lot of uh, restrictions. I mean, we got one hour, we got to do that. So we had to cut our time ahead to actually configure HTTP. I mean, we had to take down all the servers and uh, re, um, what do you call them, reconfigure them again from kind of kind of like a scratch, except from the server part. I mean, that was already configured, but the services, everything, you had to do it again. So you have to make sure uh, to uh, take care of that as well. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.